One day, when I was a little bored, I thought to myself, gee, I wonder if there's any uh, visual relationship between the numbers 1 through 100 and their factors. Because these are the kind of things I think about. So I found a website that had all this information and uh, wrote it down. You can see here it's the actual number, the amount of factors it has, and what those factors actually are. So pretty basic stuff, but let me show you the graph that I made. I made a line graph and I thought it looked really interesting, um, but I actually thought it was a little easier to read as a bar graph, so I changed it to a bar graph. And immediately you can see a couple of trends here. The first thing that we notice is that the numbers overall uh, seem to be increasing. And I don't have a trend line here, but I'll edit one in because I believe that actually is the case. And it makes sense that they're increasing because as numbers get bigger, they are mathematically able to have more factors. The second thing I noticed is that the numbers with four factors and the numbers with two factors easily make up the majority of the numbers from 1 to 100. I don't know if that would be the case if we kept this going from 1 to 100. I would actually wager it wouldn't be, um, but in this range that is the case. Something else that I thought was very, very cool was that using this graph you can see and visualize easily all of the prime numbers from 1 to 100 because how many factors does a prime number have? Just two, one and itself, right? So anything touching the line that says two in this graph would be a prime number. And here we can see that in orange. We can see two, three, five, seven, 11, 13, etc. right? All of these are primes and I think it creates a very nice visual way to just look at this graph and say, oh, if it's touching this line, it's a prime number. Um, here also is another argument for why 1 isn't a prime number. You can visually see it doesn't go up to this 2 line um, because 1 doesn't have 2 factors. A prime number is really just a number that has only 2 factors, 1 in itself, right? Um, but in the case of 1, 1 is itself, so it only has 1 factor. The next thing I noticed here, which I thought was actually quite cool, was a lot of the numbers, practically all of them you can see here, have an even amount of factors. But there are some numbers that I'm going to highlight right now which don't have an even amount of factors. They have an odd amount. And if you want to take a guess as to why this is, you can pause the video for a second. Otherwise, I'm just going to tell you. Um, so for pretty much most normal numbers, you can have, you can think about their factors almost as pairs, right? Like let's take 12 with six factors. 1 and 12. 2 and 6, 3 and 4. And all those kind of pair um, together, and so it makes an even amount of numbers, 3 and 3 is 6. But as we look at the numbers that are highlighted in magenta, we can pretty quickly notice a trend. Um, it's 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, or 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared, etc. All the numbers highlighted in magenta here are perfect squares. And when you think about it, this makes sense. Um, let's take 25, or let's, t let's take 16 for an example and talk about why, right? So if we think about the factors as the pairs that we had done before, there's 1 and 16, 2 and 8, 4 and 4. We've already counted 4 once, so we can't count it again. So basically, the perfect squares have most of their factors form pairs, but then there's one remaining number that isn't a pair. And so all of these perfect squares have an odd amount of factors. If we take 36, for example, which has nine factors, um, one and 36, two and 18, three and 12, four and nine, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then six and six, again. We already have pairs for the first four sets of factors, but then six is just paired with itself, which is already counted. So that's how we get um, an odd number of factors for 36 right there. And then if we display all the numbers here together, I think it just looks really nice. It highlights all the numbers that are perfect squares. It highlights all the numbers that are primes and then all the numbers that are neither. So a really interesting way to visualize um, factors and the patterns in them from the numbers one to 100. But I also made one other type of graph that I want to show you, and to first start with that, we have to return to our original page here uh, with the numbers and the factors. So in addition to uh, writing down the actual factors and looking at the number and the amount of factors, I also did the ratio 
of the amount of factors to the number itself. So for example, um, two has two factors, one and two. The ratio of the amount of factors to the number is two over two or one. Um, but when we look at numbers like say four, that has three factors, one, two, and four. And the ratio of factors to the number is three to four, which means the actual ratio is uh, three fourths or 0.75. So I also did a graph where I graphed the ratios of factors to numbers, and now we can look at that. So this is that graph. I didn't color code parts of it like the previous graph, but there are still some trends we can pick out. The prime numbers on this graph are always the lowest point until the next one. Because if we think about the factor ratio that we are graphing here, it is the number of factors a number has over the number. Now, in a prime number, that is always the numerator is always going to be two because that's the definition of a prime. But the denominator will always be increasing, which means the number itself will always be approaching, getting closer and closer to zero. The limit of that function is zero, and you can see that because each prime number, first two, and then three, five, seven, uh, eleven, thirteen, seventeen, nineteen. 23? Yeah, 23. Each of the prime numbers get lower and lower and closer to the x-axis, which is basically a ratio of zero. So the limit of the number of factors over prime numbers as x approaches infinity uh, is essentially zero. But the other thing this graph made me wonder is, what is the overall limit of this function? It certainly looks like the limit of this function as x approaches infinity is going to be zero. And I think if this were just primes, we could say that with absolute certainty. But I don't know if we can say that with certainty for non-primes, because those non-primes will always have a numerator that is increasing very, very slowly, um, just because of the fact that more numbers get the chance to be factors as the number increases, but maybe the actual base number itself increases at a rate faster than the factors increase. Since I filmed that last part, I actually reached out to a couple of my friends with this problem because uh, I wanted to get their input and they shared some things with me that I want to talk about. So the first is my friend mentioned that there's actually something called the divisor function, which is basically exactly what I did in the first part of this video. And it's essentially the same graph as I made, except it goes from one to 1000 instead of one to 100. Now what I was looking at in the second half of the video was the ratio of the divisors of a function over x. And even though that's closely related to the divisor function, I'm not seeing too much information on that. My friend told me that it might be possible for me to find a proof of it if in fact the limit um, as n approaches infinity is zero. But to be totally honest, I, I don't think I have the mathematical ability to find the proof. Or if I do, I don't want to commit the time to finding that proof that this might take. This is kind of just a video I made for fun. Maybe I'll come back to it in the future, but right now I'm not committing a proof to this. My other friend though suggested that I should just try this with more numbers instead of from one to 100. And while that's obviously not a proof, it's still a good way to actually see if the pattern continues. So I did actually do this from the numbers one to 1000 and I graphed it. And as you can see, the two graphs are very, very similar, um, even though they go from one to 100 and one to 1, 1000. In fact, even the best fit lines are basically identical. That to me seems to indicate that it does very slowly um, approach zero as its limit, but I still can't say that with any sort of mathematical proof. So this is actually in mathematics what we would call a conjecture. I can't prove it or at least I don't know how to, um, but I think it's correct and that's kind of the conjecture that I am putting out into the world right now. So it's only fitting that we end this video with my namesake. Thanks to my friends who added this extra information. Thank you for watching this video. Shout out Skeptical Seventh and all my other patrons. Uh, make sure you click that little gray bell next to subscribe so you can see all my other videos. And that's all I got. Thank you very much.